my name is uh, Richard Burkett, and um, otherwise known for many people call me Matt. My wildlife photography, um, especially on my YouTube channel, is really focused around Cornwall, um, the southwest England, maybe up towards sort of Devon, Exmoor, Somerset way. And now currently I'm in Scotland, so I'm doing stuff up here which I ordinarily wouldn't do at home because obviously the species are totally different. Even on the walk up that we had, we had a we had a few species just just walking up uh, through the hill, didn't we? Like it was it was pretty. Yeah, I'm, it was great actually to when we first set off from kind of like the base where we parked up yep. and um, made our way up. And then straight away, we were into species. I mean, we had oyster catcher, curlew straight away off the car park, yeah. you know, to, and to hear that call of a curlew, you know, oh, in its cool. brilliant environment was awesome. And then, you know, I think we, well, by all accounts, we could have, we probably could have stayed there a little bit longer and we've had a bit more action. But, and then we, yeah, as we went sure. up further, you know, the, the landscape or the, the environment changed. We had the wheaties then, didn't we? Which was nice, a nice male wheatier flitting around. Every now and then the light would come through because it was a pretty wet and miserable yeah. day. But when the light comes through, it, it's brilliant. And we had that oh, yeah. flying about with the nice kind of backgrounds, uh, just of the you know trees and the mountains in the back. As we went up, we didn't get eyes on it, but we caught the uh, the ring all singing. Yeah. Which was lovely to hear. I mean, I've not heard ring all sing before because I've never really been where they've bred. So every time we've had them down in Cornwall, they've been passing through and they don't through, obviously yeah. call. When we got up there it was like 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 one of the days i had at the harshest through winter like it was just crazy mm -hmm. um it was funny as well like the the day before uh, we met up i was actually camping below so i posted a little picture on my stories on instagram just from just i think i'd have my setup of the food or something like that or a glass of beer or something and then just the hill in the background and uh, obviously some people recognize it you know and there's a local photographer he texted me he's like are you going up there tomorrow are you crazy are you not seeing the weather report <laughs> when we got yeah when we got up the hill though and you get to that kind of transition i don't know up the first hill because i was really hoping we were might be able to get golden plovers up there because i've photographed them there before and it's it's round about the right time of year, I think. I think they start settling up there in early May, but the whole thing, even that first top was pretty covered in snow. Through an ice patch of pool with loads of snow and Loch Nagar completely covered with that backdrop. I was thinking we were looking for plover, golden plover, because that would have been awesome seeing them up there. But to be honest, I think like we discussed that they must have gone at lower altitudes because yeah. of the weather and we, we missed out. Hence why we then decided let's have a, let's have a go for hair and maybe ptarmigan. But uh, I don't think my fingers would have allowed me to go any higher <laughs> ptarmigan at the end unless I had proper Gucci gloves uh, that you had. Once you get up that first top, you're like, all oh, right, we're here. I always forget how long a trek it is actually up to the next top and further along. Cause you gotta go, I like to go quite, quite a bit further along because we did we had a couple of hairs before that but you know they would see us coming like a mile away yeah it's a hundred meters away and start yeah. running, you know, so i was surprised i was surprised i mean we we'll, i wouldn't say we were it was difficult to be overly stealthy in that environment because the snow was pretty thick up to your knees in some places yeah you know we weren't we didn't have arctic white camouflage on you know because that's probably a bit extreme i don't know but i didn't expect the hairs to be as twitchy as they were Notoriously, I know brown hair people say, you know, 
they're a nightmare, but other people have gone right up to them, you know, and some mountain hares are better than others, I suppose. But I did, so I was sort of thinking to myself, when we were making our way up, and I think we stopped there and we had a look across and we'd seen some hair, got the bins out, got the cameras out, and I was thinking, how the hell are we gonna get close to these guys to get a decent image maybe and, and get some decent views even? And we we transitioned then dumped bags yeah got a little bit more stealthy down down in it yeah and, uh, yeah started peeking good. over every very carefully peeking over every little kind of little hill there was you know don't not make any yeah. sudden movements over those bit of a bum bum wobble in the air but trying to get as low as possible with yeah. with what you have with your gear it's kind of difficult and your hands are freezing But uh, I think, you know, when we stayed there for, I don't know how long we were there for in that position, probably 20, maybe 30, yeah. 40 minutes, I don't know. But Say that. kept looking at each other going, we had enough, should we uh, <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes? And then literally I was taking pictures because one of the things was pretty nice for you is that I didn't hear you take any because you've got a mirrorless and I didn't hear any, any noise where I was there, even with my 5DSR clunking away. Because my fingers were so cold, I was taking pictures because my fingers weren't working. <laughs> just, gotta, just gotta move them away. Like, oh, Jesus, a picture of nothing. But um, no, I was like, take a few big pictures, but then it's like, oh, 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 oh. oh, yeah, back, back, warm hands, warm hand. I had all the gloves with me, all the, you know, the, my big mittens and everything. And I left them in the bag, and all of a sudden, we're like, I don't know, 100 meters away from the bag or something like that. I was like, too late yeah. now, I'm stuck with this. Crap that I have on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got one particular nice one when the wind picked up, and we and we were we were up that the furthest place we got to, and we saw those two mountain hare just feeding and then sheltering, and then I think the wind got up, and then it's almost like a bit of a um, a whiteout area just up where the hares were, and it was kind of a really nice effect. I would, was hoping to use an image that I'd taken with that in, but I think if you would, I think if you put it on social media, it'd be hard for people to to pick out what that was. It's yeah. just like a little circle. A little small. Yeah, I think even if I cropped in, you wouldn't, and then you wouldn't get the effect of the wind blowing the, yeah. 
the snow and stuff. But it was a really cool um, scene just to see it, like the because it was so yeah. extreme. But it doesn't always show uh, in a photo, and partly because very often it was so white in the background as well. So the snow doesn't really stick out that much. But like you no. see, when you zoom in on the hair itself, and the hair was grey, I could just see snow going past yeah. it like this. I mean, I, I, I must. It was one thing I did leave leave me thinking when we were heading back down and getting out the the coldest part of the of the hills and stuff that to really respect the environment these these animals and birds choose to choose to make their home because you know it's, it's an unforgiving place up there and they just take it in their stride don't they and kind of like you know. and we're there all year every year you yeah. know like that's that's it that's the life yeah it's crazy yeah and it's and i and i think we you know we did discuss at length and well, I'm going off piste here a little bit, hence the piece bit. But um, I don't know whether, like we're saying, our footprint as photographers try not to disturb them too much because obviously yeah. our footprint, which we're always conscious of, um, you know. And I know we went up there together, and with two photographers, it does increase your decrease your chances of getting anything decent with two of you mooching around on the hills. But I think we did okay in the end with what we got. Really, I think, I think you know so too. I think I like. I like the way we did it, you know, like we obviously when you walk up there, like you say, they they see you very far away and they're quite active. So, you know, you're going to flush a few of them, you know, you're going to scare a few of them away. But uh, once we had a couple, you know, we didn't just keep moving in, keep moving in. We just settled down for a bit, you know, take it. Yeah. In and and I think we peeled off. Out. Yeah, we peeled off away, away from them as a not to disturb and flush them further up, yeah. further away, sort of. And I was... I was actually quite surprised, you know, because we we did near enough st stamp on a few, um, not actually literally stamp on, but we did flush quite a few red grouse, didn't we? Yes. Which just seemed to be the blending in with the little bits of heather that exposed. It's amazing how camouflage they are because they were just like sometimes they were feet in front of us. Yeah, yeah, you almost step on. Like, yeah, right. and then they sort of fly off and then they relax a little bit, quite quite close to you. They, I, I thought they'd be gone, but they were. I mean, it's another species that I'm not used to seeing. You know, uh, we don't obviously get grouse down in Cornwall. Um, so all these new species, and, and that's the thing, you know, I've been doing, taking pictures for 35 years, but I've never done work with any of these species. So it's a completely new thing for me, but then I'm learning as I go along. And, you know, obviously I watched a few of your vlogs and uh, a few other people, had a few words with a few other people about um, working with mountain hares and stuff like that. And it's something that I, I'd definitely love to do again when they're in full winter, yeah. I think. I was and head back up. up. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. Glad, we, uh, I'm glad we found our bags. I would have probably missed um, our bags in the end because I felt like I, <laughs> I couldn't even see our tracks uh, when we were walking. No, they, they, they actually disappeared pretty damn quick, didn't they? Yeah, because all of a sudden you just crawl a little bit you know, that way and then we slid down a little bit and yeah. you, know, you think that it's a straight way back, but it really wasn't. You know, it was, if, uh, I mean, if, if it had come in hard and we'd lost visibility, we could have been caught out a little there. You know, it's yeah. kind of, it's that realism that it is pretty extreme, you yeah. know, and I, and I guess you, you don't often get tested in environments like that every day, especially for where I am. Uh, so anyways, uh, you're going to be coming up with a whole series from uh, Scotland on your YouTube channel. So where can people uh, catch up with you on YouTube and Instagram? Yep. So YouTube channel, Richard Burkett, just um, that's B-I-R-C-H-E-T-T. -T, and same for uh, Instagram. I've got quite a bit coming up on the channel. I've done quite a few vlogs since I've been up here for the last three weeks. So squirrels, uh, hair curlew lapwing all that sort of stuff um had some really really great um great experiences and and a few little uh ups and downs of my time but uh, yeah really looking for they should be out coming out fairly soon when i get back to cornwall and i'll edit those and then get them on but i'm uh, also on facebook and twitter as well brilliant i'll, uh, I'll put links in the description below so you guys can uh, check it awesome. out awesome it, it was really cool uh, catching up with you and uh, a lot of fun so yeah, yeah, definitely great to be in touch and uh, hopefully uh, many more and um, maybe return the favour if you ever get down yeah. to Cornwall, maybe oh, one yeah. day, if you travel that far yeah. south. Take a little yeah. longer van trip next yeah. time. Yeah. But yeah, awesome. Give a shout out to DJ Maharshi for helping name the van, Van Wilder. Love it, VW. So thank you very much for that.